Hey, everybody. Uh, hope they had a wonderful weekend. Um, it was beautiful here. Well, probably it's beautiful where you're at, too. I mean, we're all in the same town. But got a lot of stuff done. I've been trying to figure out how I want to take this class digitally online. It, it's tough because we're not really building things, but I am getting emails from some students, which is awesome of pictures or, you know, hey, I was working on this or I had somebody message me to remind asking a woodworking question. If you're doing projects at home, if you, even if you were just working on your house, maybe you built your some, uh, mom something for Mother's Day, feel free to share them with me. I, I enjoy seeing it. I, I miss creating with everybody, I guess I can say. We watched, uh, my wife and I watched the, uh, there was a special Parks and Rec reunion that they did for COVID where they all kind of did like the online meetings. And it got me thinking about Nick Offerman. Most, well, people that follow, I guess, the trendy stuff, the actors or whatever, uh, know, you know, some of the things like Alex Trebek, for example, bought a hardware store, the host of Jeopardy that was, he likes to tinker and figure out how things work and repair things himself. That's his hobby. He bought a hardware store uh, a few years back that way. It was a failing hardware store. He bought it, took all the stuff, and that way he has everything he needs to complete his hobby and work on things and this and that. I'm like, that's pretty neat to buy an entire hardware store. Um, that's just one famous celebrity. Unfortunately, most celebrities, as we know, their their lives consist of, you know, Twitter followers and look what I did this week or, oh, my gosh, can you believe this actor or actress did this or that or who are they dating or what's going on? Yeah, that's not. Yay. I mean, that's not me. If if you're somebody that loves to follow that stuff, good for you. I mean, I guess that's a hobby. Um, but the actor for Nick Offerman on Parks and Rec, he plays Ron Swanson, you know, the big burly bearded guy that seems like, a you know, the, the manly man or whatever. He actually is a woodworker. Uh, he got started in the industry. He was a uh, set builder um, for the Hollywood industry. He has a shop in Los Angeles. You can see this is outside of his shop. It it looks rough, um, but on, it's not what's on the outside. It's what's on the inside. So I found there's a couple of different shop tours with him. He has always ran his own shop. Uh, what ended up happening is his life story was he was went out to L.A. to kind of figure out this Hollywood thing, maybe get a job when he was younger. And he ended up doing set design and set building. Any we don't need pop ups. Oh, I can't figure out how to get rid of it. Um, and he was building a set and, you know, one of the directors or something at the time said to him, Hey, you know, get over here and stand in for this person or, Oh, you look good for this scene. Come on over here. And it was kind of like, you know, I put down my hammer and from there he did a little bit more and more acting and here he is. Uh, he's an interesting guy. He's not like what you think. Uh, the Parks and Rec character, you know, is very, you know, gruff, uh, closed off. He's he's actually a really nice person, it seems like, and pretty. he's very humble, and he's got a really unique laugh when he does laugh. But So I found this video, and I'm going to give you the link. Um, it It's one of a few videos that are online that actually tour his shop. Uh, and there you go. It's, it's Ron Swanson from uh, Parks and Rec. You're, but it's his actual name is Nick Offerman. Um, he still operates his own wood shop, and they're going to give a little tour of it. And toward the end of this video, what I liked about this one, and this is the uh, can't think of his last name. It's Kevin from This Old House, the host. They go on a tour of uh, Nick Offerman's shop. Nick Offerman likes to build really big tables, like the tables that are made out of you know a full slice of tree, and he actually built a um, a flattening jig or uh, a flattening jig. I can't think of the name of it right now. I'm on the spot. But you'll see in these uh, videos. I got it again. It's early in the morning. So they take you on a tour of a shop. It's nothing fancy, but you don't need anything fancy. Um, actually, I'm jealous. It's an old industrial building is what it pretty much appears to be. And he has full room, but I'm going to skip through. We're not going to watch this whole video together. I want you to watch it on your own. And then you show... But, Take a peek at this one. This is what most people that get into woodworking don't understand is I need tools. Yeah, you're going to need basic tools to get started. 
But let's really look at what's going on here. Look over on that wall. Let's see what we can see. There's a shop vac. He's got a vacuum that's a fest tool. That's like a thousand dollar vacuum. That's that's a nice piece of equipment. Uh, that's a mortiser. That's a fan. You got some chisels back here. It looks like there may be a lathe back there because you can see the chisels and some calipers. Probably doing smaller blocks of wood or something. But this is what I really want to look at. Look at this wall. They're jigs. Every single one of them is a jig. Uh, that could be for, I know he builds paddles. That was one of the things he got into for a while. That's a paddle jig. Looks like there's some kind of dead critter on the wall. But this is really what I want you to pay attention to is jigs. Most people don't realize that when you actually build a woodworking project, hey, I want to build a dining room table, or hey, I want to build this, you're going to have to build something to build something. In other words, you're going to have to build a jig or a fixture or something to complete a cut or a hole. I'm trying to think of the last woodworking project I built. Oh, the, uh, the linen closet in my bathroom, all made out of old barn wood. We had a jig made for the doors. We ha I had a jig made for the adjustable shelving. And then what do you do with it when you're done? This is pretty typical in most people's wood shops. They'll take the jig and they'll throw it on the wall. Why? Because if you ever build it again or want to come back to it, it's there. You don't want to have to rebuild it again. I mean, the reality of it is, unless you build them all the time, though, it kind of just becomes like the wall of honor. Like even at school, we have jigs. Most of them are upstairs. I've got jigs for cutting tapered legs. I've got jigs for cutting perfectly round circles on the bandsaw. We've got lots of things we've built over the years. Um, the recurve bows that we built in the wood shop. I've got three or four jigs for cutting the risers and the limbs and everything else. So that's just something that I thought was interesting. The other thing is, yeah, I may have passed it. I seen it when I was, oh, ah, let's see here if I can find it. Oh, I don't want to close out of that. Can I do this? Oh, I can do this. Yay. I'm learning. Maybe I didn't go past it. He actually shows some of the tools he has. So this is him. They're building a table out of all these pieces they glued up. Check that out. Look familiar? That's one thing he talks about in his video that most of the actual machines that they have. Well, I can't see the brand on that one. It almost looks like an Otis, which would be awesome. Um, but that planer, that looks like the same exact thing we have. Or, excuse me. I'm so sorry. Or pretty close. It goes to show you, you take care of the equipment, and those old green power Macs are awesome beasts. Uh, I'm sure that he put a helical head in his, just like ours, to really bring up today. But these old machines, I'm not saying the new power Macs aren't good. I mean, they're made and assembled in the U.S., but made of foreign parts. The old green power Macs, like you saw in that video just a second ago, that guy, that's a beast of a machine. And it, this is actually, I think, only a... Ours is a 24. That, I think, is the 18-inch model, but it's still the uh, Power Mac, I want to say 225 or 250. Has reverse up on the up and forward, um, speed selection, and then same exact setup as ours. We can go up and down with it. But look at that. The old Delta uh, drill press. Like, it just goes to show you buy older tools that are taken care of. They still will last you, and they'll probably last somebody beyond you and probably somebody beyond them. But what I like about this video is he kind of talks about, you know, what do you really need to get into woodworking? And he shows just some really basic hand saws and hand tools. And the truth is that's really all you do need. I mean, yes, eventually you would love to get some power tools, but they're not cheap. So I like this video just because you get to see a shop a little bit. You get to find out that he's not just Ron Swanson. He is Nick Offerman. Um, I love in the background here, especially right there. Those are all old card catalogs from a library. I would love to get a hold of one. Those make nice storage for tools and nuts and bolts. Same thing here. Just different fittings. And I always am impressed. Every woodworker, you know, they decorate their shop differently. Is a photo of somebody up on the wall. Who knows what's up there? It, it, it becomes kind of your, your cave kind of deal. But 
watch the video. It's a short video. It's only a little under eight minutes. DeKalb up here in the top. That is a seed company. And I can't remember if he's originally from, I want to say, Iowa or Kansas. Uh, so maybe something that helps him remember, you know, his home. So watch this video. There's no questions for you to, you know, think about some of the points I pointed out as I'm talking about this. But there's nothing to turn in for this assignment on Tuesday. Thursday of this week, there will be an assignment. So stay tuned for that. Uh, hopefully everybody has a uh, safe Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll see you back on Thursday. And now I got to remember how to stop. Think it's this one. No, that one. What's that do? Nope, that just makes me bigger. I'm scared to click it and lose everything. I'm still learning. This one. Let's see what happens. Or what happens if I just do that? And then I do that. Nope, that didn't do it. There's my background. Okay. Oh, there it is on the side. I'm learning. Take care.